A couple of weeks ago, on the Montessori Secrets series, we talked about the development of will in young children. And this week, I'm back with another secret to share with you. We're going to be talking about obedience and self-discipline. My name is Jenny Amar, and I'm the Master Trainer at Sunshine Teachers Training. I'm also a Certified Transformational Parent Coach. And one of my greatest joys is being able to share my knowledge of Montessori with you so that we can all learn and grow and help our children. Thank you so much for watching our videos, for subscribing to our channel, and for the comments and encouragement you leave. It really keeps us going. It keeps us, you know, excited to create new, new content and share this with you. So we're still navigating our way through the laws of natural development, this time talking about obedience and self-discipline, which is very much connected to the topic of development of will that we discussed a few weeks ago. And I will link that here in case you missed it so you can catch up on that. And this one will be easier to follow then. There's a certain time when our children reach this phase and they start challenging us. They don't want to follow any rules. At every point, they are refusing to do things. They're refusing to comply. They just don't want to obey. I mean, the rules are there for a, a reason and they've got to follow them, right? We all follow rules in every area of, of life. So how? How do we get our children to follow rules and obey? Now, going back to the secret from last time, where children are developing their will, this is the first step towards the development of obedience and self-discipline. So let me refresh you a little bit. For will to develop, children need freedom, freedom to move, freedom to act, freedom to make choices. And that is all provided in our Montessori prepared environments. And hopefully many are doing it at home as well. So when a child chooses a material, they are exercising their will. When they feed the pet, it's an act of will. When they go and they, uh, you know, pick a, an activity and they're working on it, or they choose to put on their shoes, these are all acts of will. Any purposeful activity that the child does is an act of will, and it's important that we do not suppress it. Through continuous activity, the will develops and it becomes stronger and the child begins to feel, I can move, I'm in control, the adults trust me. They start to use their reasoning in purposeful ways. And as the will becomes stronger, their self-confidence grows and obedience starts to emerge. So what is obedience? There are two kinds of obedience. There is the controlled obedience that comes from rewards and punishments, which is conditioned. Let me give you some examples. Uh, a child does an activity well, and we reward them by giving them a star, or we praise them, oh, you're such a good boy, good job, well done. Uh, or the child misbehaves and we punish, punish them by taking away some of their privileges. You cannot use the iPad today. You cannot go out to play or, um, you know, you, you're going to have a time out. Now, on the flip side, there is obedience that comes through self-discipline. Montessori says, obedience is an act of intelligence and an act of will. Obedience that comes out of self-discipline is true obedience because it doesn't come from a place of fear. It doesn't come from a place of need that, you know, I, I want that reward, I want that prize. And it's something that's long-lasting. True obedience comes when the child actually wants to obey and follow the rules. The child who achieves obedience through self-discipline will complete a task, will do something not because somebody's watching him, but because he actually wants to do it. Blind obedience is when they follow directions or commands from an adult, or they exhibit this good behavior when the adult is present, and when then the adult is not around, then everything changes. But having obedience from self-discipline is making the right choices without the presence of a reward or an adult or anybody controlling that situation. Now, as we're helping this obedience to, to develop and the will to develop, when a child does make a mistake, we don't jump in there and start scolding them. Oh, how could you do that? Look at what you did. That's not the right way to do things. But 
we want to take a moment and observe where the child's challenge lies, okay? And then another time, after, you know, the moment has passed, maybe the next day or later in the day, you can show them the right way to do things. True obedience doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. And we need to have faith and patience. Dr. Montessori said that the development of obedience is a three-step process. She says there are three levels of obedience. So let's dig a little deeper into the idea of obedience as a natural part of the child's development. You will see the first level of obedience in children below the age of three. What you notice is that sometimes the child will follow the rules, sometimes they don't follow the rules, they just refuse to do it. For the most part, what they're doing is they're just following their impulses. They want to do something, they just do it. They don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. They have not yet developed their will, so they are quick to act on their impulses. But it takes practice. Just like a little baby who's learning to walk, it doesn't happen overnight. They need a lot of movement, they need space, they need to practice it over and over, fall, get up, try again, and then they will be able to perfect walking. In the same way, children need to exercise their will to be able to master it, to perfect it, to allow it to develop. So if we as adults give them the opportunities to exercise their will, as discussed in the last video, then they will be able to get to the second level of obedience. Now what happens in the second level of obedience is the child is always following the rules. They're actually using their will to follow your will. Now things are smoother, it seems easier, and parents think, this is the win, this is what I wanted. My child is following the rules and we're done. But actually, no, we're not yet done. There is something even more beautiful about to happen at the third level of obedience. Dr. Montessori noticed that there is an even higher level of obedience when the child gets to the third level. Now what's happening here is the child has an understanding. He now knows that when he's asked to follow certain rules, it's for his own good. He has internalized that following rules is beneficial for him and he wants to obey. He is using his own will to obey rather than just doing things because you said so. So prior to this, at the second level, he will follow the rules. For example, he will tidy up because he knows these are the rules of the school. He knows he has to. There are rules at home that he has to follow. Sometimes he may do it. Sometimes he may make a little bit of a fuss, but eventually he'll you know, follow through because he knows this is the way things work. But at the third level, he's eager to obey. He wants to clean up because he knows that this is what's best for him. Now, isn't that a fantastic thing? It sounds really good, right? But how do we make this happen? It doesn't just happen automatically. Now, at the second level, you will, you will remember that I mentioned that we have to give our children a lot of opportunities. How do we do that? First of all, give your child choices. I mentioned this before, make the choices limited. Don't just say, okay, do whatever you want, but give them options. Today, we're gonna go out for dinner. Should we get, uh, you know, should we go for uh, Chinese or should we have Italian? Um, you know, we're getting dressed to go out. Would you like to uh, wear the pink dress or would you like to wear the purple dress? Which one would you like to choose today? So simple, small choices give them, uh, allow them to make those choices and let them go through with it. When they have made that choice, don't override it, okay? Don't, you know, take away that decision by something you might think is better for them. So you're sitting there and you say to your child, what would you like to wear today when we go out? And, uh, you know, they decide to choose the purple t-shirt with the polka dot yellow pants and you think, oh my God, this just looks so funny. It looks really weird. And I'm going to try and, you know, manipulate the situation so that my child changes their choices. It may seem like not a big deal, but when you override their choices, you're showing a lack of trust. And we don't want to do that. It's all right. Go with the child's choice. Show that you support them, okay? 
and let them feel good about their decision. When children are starting to develop their will and then we interfere with that and we override it, they start to resent us. It bugs them and they start to push back against us and some of them might fight against us and you know become more argumentative whereas others will just their will will completely weaken so in either ways we're not allowing the will to develop another thing you can do is lay some ground rules at home simple rules for children to follow uh, that you know make everything harmonious for everybody not rules that serve me as a mother or a parent but rules that serve all of us to make our you know things at home run smoothly um, don't have too many rules just four is enough four simple rules for children to follow and always have reasons for the rules so let them discuss with you you know I think that you really do need to tidy your toys after playing and uh, tell me why do you think it's not a good idea to leave it in the middle of the room let them brainstorm when they understand the reasons behind the rules it's easier for them to follow now another thing you want to do is not give your child rewards or punishments or praise. Rather, try and implement con consequences. You can use the when and then method. So when you tidy up your toys, then we can have dinner. Okay, simple things like that. Do it always with respect, keeping their self-esteem intact. All of this takes time, but gradually slowly with patience the child strengthens his will and then you will see he will start to obey now coming to the third level of obedience one of the key ingredients here in making this happen is love and connection when we build strong and healthy relationships with our children we are building a very strong foundation of trust and our children will recognize that and they will feel respected and that's when they become willing to obey they will be ready to cooperate with us because of the connection that we share with each other i want you to take a moment and think back to that teacher that you had in school the teacher that you love just for a moment picture your favorite teacher and you have you love this teacher you have so much respect for them you never want to disappoint them right you never want to do something to upset them. You want to maintain that connection. You want to uh, have a healthy relationship with them. And so why would you want to break the rules, right? You wouldn't, wa wouldn't want to go against that teacher. That's not the teacher where you will be, you know, not paying attention in class or dozing off or chatting with your friends or misbehaving. That's where you're always eager and you're happy and you're complying with everything that goes on in that classroom. So this is what happens when we connect with our children and we develop a relationship with them. They are happy to follow the rules and they are happy to obey. And I don't want you to stress about getting your child to the third level of obedience. No one is perfect. Everything takes time, but show faith in your, in your child and show that you believe that your child is capable of amazing things. And you will see it will happen seamlessly. I hope learning about this secret has helped you out and given you some ideas, some tools and some tips that you will be able to implement in your homes and your schools. I have a lot more secrets coming your way, so keep coming back. Make sure that your notifications are on and you are subscribed so that you don't miss a single video. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. I look forward to some comments, any suggestions, and keep coming back and watching our videos. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.